Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm Mark Rambacher. I'm on the select board in the Affordable Housing Trust, and I help organize this event. Um, if you recall, about a year ago, or roughly, we did an event with um, with the developers of 550 King Street, and they talked. They brought the uh, seniors in and asked what they would like in the apartments um, that they were building there. And there was a lot of discussion about whether to do townhouses and things like that. Um, so. Um, I helped organize this event to uh, talk about option, what, what, what different options for senior housing for whether it's aging in place or uh, uh, downsizing or in apartments. Um, uh, we have Kim Abertelli, a realtor here, and uh, Dave Carpenter, who does uh, financial planning, uh, to give you more information and talk, answer any questions you might have. So thank you. So mostly we're here because both of us have clients that ask us many of the same questions all day long. So we thought, hey, let's do this when everybody gets to see the same answers and then we can get more questions from you and go from there. We're not here to try to get your business. We're actually here to try to be a community and answer questions. We know that we have affordable housing coming in we know that we have a lot of rentals being built in town and we know that a lot of you are sitting in places that you no longer want to mow the lawn or <laughs> do some repairs to so we thought let's figure this out together and ask each other questions and i'm dave and uh i guess maybe uh start with uh any commonality in the questions you might have. I know some people are nervous about leaving the home they have for ever. Um, uh, do most people still have a mortgage? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you guys have a home equity line of credit? Anyone? Okay. And um, is most of your income fixed? Okay. And how about 401ks or IRAs? You have that? Okay. Um, and how many uh, people have their children asking them what they're going to do? <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's what we see uh, in, uh, uh, as people age. Um, you know, somebody has a health issue or someone uh, falls or, you know, they get to be 80 or something, and they go, Mom and Dad, what are you going to do? Um, you know, w we worry about you. And so sometimes that's the driver to make a decision. And then how many people have never moved before? Okay, so you have a lot of stuff. At least the rest of you probably had the dumpster at least once. So... Um, no, so, so I just, I just came from my dad's house who passed away at a hundred, uh, in the spring and, uh, the house was built in 1912 and my mom's dad passed away in 51, I think. So no one threw anything away ever. I found, I found like, uh. By year, all the bills paid in a in a in a cabinet. I was like, "Oh my God!" So anyway, um, what's the biggest fears? Maybe you just you know, shout out you know what you're worried about. Um, the unknown. Oh, we all worry about that. So um, the unknown, like how long will I live? As to where you go. Right. And all of you own your own home right now? No. no. So some of you rent? I live with my daughter. You live with your daughter. Perfect. And she wants you to leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, good. Uh, yes. Oh, that role reversal, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, so um, I guess the, the big thing is usually these things 
if you don't really plan ahead are event driven. You know, something happens and then you don't really have a choice. Oh. And we have a house upstairs, and we need a wheelchair and a walker, and yep. we can't do anything to get right. through the stair. Or even get into a, sh a stall shower that only has a lift this big, we can't get into that. Right. So part of it is if we decide to stay in our own home, how do we adapt it right. to the way we want to live now? Yep. Or are we better off just going to someplace smaller, first of all, because it's too big? Hmm. Um, but it's hard to find. We can't find any place to go. Yeah, they don't build smaller homes anymore. No. I have so many ideas. <laughs> so for 25 years, first I was an interior designer. So lots and lots of clients that I've had over time have figured out how to live in the home. And you're right, that lip, even though it's four inches, it keeps that water in, it also keeps you out. So there are wet rooms. Right. And so that's what we designed to get you to be able to navigate that. All the door frames are not well. We're actually, uh, the trust is now working on the Habitat for Humanity house and we're trying to get one of the units to be able to be completely universally designed for exactly that foresight mm -hmm. so that nobody can't use it. Mm -hmm. And if we think ahead in these new places, we can make that happen. Uh, it's reach, because if you're in a chair, then your reach is different, but there are cabinets that come down. Oh. So cool. <laughs> there are wet rooms. There are the, where you might have your living room now. We could make that be your bedroom. So there's a lot of ways to fix that. What is a wet room? The entire bathroom is wet. So you have a drain, it all slopes into that one drain so that y y it's imperceptible in many ways, but you have a, a section that's your shower, but that drains into that water. And then when you go to clean your bathroom, you literally can hose it if you want to. Mm. It's kind of clever. So, and that's been invented a long time ago and not by me, but I think it's genius. So we're gonna use it when we can. So why don't they just make new houses like that? because they cost too much, because the standard doors are standard, so they can get them at a better price. Because it's um, more skill to make all of your floors in your house be level, and all of us have thresholds because they use the wrong subfloor, they use the wrong <laughs> materials, they didn't think, nobody cared. So it was cheaper than to rip up the subfloor that was there and all of that. So I am on a crusade and have been for some time and that's part of why I'm here, to find out what it is that flummoxes you in your houses so that we can build some of the new places better. It is possible to build a shower without a lift. We had one yeah. built 40 years ago. That's right. Wow. It's not rocket science. Yeah. It is not. Yeah, that's right. Janet. I was gonna say, who does this kind of work? I mean, is there like someone you can call and they are conscious of enough of this to be able to go through your whole house and design it? Yes, and if you research universal design, mm -hmm. that actually can help you a lot. Um, the ADA has its own set of bylaws uh -huh. and rules and, and challenges, mm -hmm. but universal means it's a little bit of a broader scope. It's so that no matter what your, it might be site, it might be physical, it might be simply that you have a small stature, it might, all of that. Universal is different than ADA compliant. So, you know one of those. Right, and to your point, there's lots and lots of contractors, but my contractors are all in their 60s now, all of my favorites, mm -hmm. and bless their hearts, they would like to retire. And so when they go for their re-up, their licenses, they realize that in the room, there might be 20% that are in their 20s or 30s, and they're in their 50s and 60s. So if you know some young bucks who are creative, I'd like to train them up and turn them into great builders. We, we're gonna need a lot of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so in terms of, know, go ahead. Do you happen to know the commune that they're being, that's being built now, that's for seniors? Is it designed to do all of this stuff? 
Well, it's not quite a commune, but yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> Hager Home Homestead? Yes. Yes. So that is, I have not been in the big building, but we have some residents, so that might help you answer some of those questions. <laughs> I forget your first name. Barbara. Barbara. Barbara might be able to answer questions offline to help with that. I have not been through the big, the it big has space. It's designed to be accessible. It is an ADA compliant. Yeah. Right. Good. One level. Right. Mm -hmm. Wide doors. And there's an elevator, so you can get to your unit wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to think through when the IBM campus is done, is to think through, we don't have control over everything, right? We're just a couple of people who really see a lot of people in the world. And as part of the Affordable Housing Trust, we try to influence the builders to build what our people need. But this is why we keep doing these things, is to make that list really clear and we're trying to make sure that there is a component of Littleton folks that get chosen first, but we don't have control over that either. So we're trying to do all the things that we can to make sure that we're creating housing that we want and that we can get. Does that make sense? Mark, just shout at me if I say something that you're thinking, oh Lord, what is she saying? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got stay in place yeah. as one option, and. Most people need to have a first floor that can be converted and, and all those things. Um, the other thing is move. Um, some people, uh, that's, you know, I think a lot of people move closer to one of their kids and then very close for you. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, there's, kind of a fork in the road. Do you go into just a rental? Do you go into assisted living or independent living that has the kind of step program as you age and, and decay? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and so sometimes the, the resources to, you know, um, change your house you know, they become expensive. So sometimes um, you don't have that cash lying around. You'd have to borrow it, you know, and home equity line are pretty expensive right now, the interest rates. But, um, you know, a home equity line of credit is basically they look at your house and your income and they say, eh, your house is worth 700000 We'll give you two hundred. the ability to borrow $200,000 anytime you want. You don't have to take 200 out. You can just do, you know, if you if you don't make ends meet on the fixing up your house, you know, you take a thousand dollars and and now that's all you borrow. Um, you know, you can borrow all the way up to 200,000 in that example. But um, that's a way to stay in your house and be able to afford, you know. And then if you can't even afford the payment next month, you can take you know, your $300 out and then put it back in and they consider that a payment. So, um, anyway, that's that's one way to, to stretch. You know, for a lot of people, the house is the most valuable asset they have at this point. Um, and so, and they may not want to leave. So that's the question is, if you sell and then rent something, you know, you've got a big pile of money now that, um, you could probably afford, you know, 20 years of rent uh, out of what you get out of your house. And uh, so that's uh, a way to supplement your, you know, Social Security or if you have a pension, those kind of things. I mean, from our standpoint, what I think about is, like, I don't want to move now. I'm, if things are working well, and now it's Grandma's house. It's so all, that I, it's I mean, right. That's all great. It all but works. knowing that these events may happen, what should I be doing now to prepare for when that event happens and we think we need to do something else? It's not a fire drill, that we've done some preparation. That's, that's me, I'm off. I say get the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the start. That's always the start. Well, You're I think, exactly I think right. it, it mentally says, I'm going to do something at some point. Yeah. Right. And, you know, everybody's got a bunch of junk. I mean, some of it probably should be shredded, but. You know, everybody's got treasures. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't you get the dumpster now? I have a truckload of treasures from my dad's house this yeah. morning. Yeah. So, 
So a lot of us can't throw things away because they are valuable, but keep in mind that if they were valuable to you once, they're probably going to be valuable to somebody else, and this is a time to look. And if they aren't, set them free because you can donate. There are so many places to donate. Our team has a whole list of places to donate. We also have, yes, a dumpster, but I can tell you, I am a big fan of doing everything else first, right? Think about who can use what you have. Hmm. I'll bet if you start in your office, you've got too many office supplies. <laughs> start there, give it to the schools, yeah. right? So think about each, don't even think room. Think one shelf in one closet. Think one drawer in the kitchen and just systematically start purging. I'll bet you don't need three sets of sheets for your each bed. If you have your guests come every six months, two years, and you need a set of sheets, you might need one spare, right? But we all have so many things. And there are shelters and there are places who need those things that you will feel better and you can donate it and do a tax write-off or just donate them if you don't have a tax situation that requires that. So that's the very first step is to purge and get rid of all the things because it does do two things. It creates an energy shift and this is where the woo-woo of Kim Albertelli comes in. Energy matters. And so if you are stuck and stagnant, your stuff will be stuffed and stagnant as well. And you won't be able to set it free but if you know that somebody can actually use it and feel purposeful with it, it does help sometimes. Um, I mean, I'll open it up to questions. You know, uh, anybody want to, uh, I know some of this stuff is personal. I'm going to leave some business cards and we, we're going to offer an hour of free time for anybody who want, needs to kind of go through things. We can either do it on the phone or Zoom or our offices in uh, Westford. <laughs> But, um, go ahead. What's the update with the building, the, the big building, the IBM building? What is the update on that? That's from Mr. That'd be Mark. Uh, the, um, the, the IBM facility has 800-ish um, apartments approved for it. For that, um, they're supposed to be groundbreaking, I believe, sometime um, in the spring. The first building, do you know what the date of the first building is? Mr. Part Harvey? Of? <laughs> so it, it's probably about a, I would guess a year and a half or so out before they have the first set of apartments. Um, and some of it's going to be affordable housing. Uh, they they have ten percent affordable units. How about handicapped? Uh, I believe they're. I believe most of them, if not all, will be universal design. I'm not entirely positive on that. I know they were very receptive to that. Um, there will be. It's like seventy percent of the units are one bedroom apartments and like 20% two bedroom and 10 three, uh, that's roughly speaking. And they're not um, tiny. Okay. Good. So you can have a desk, you can have your dresser, you can, you know, not mm -hmm. tiny. And I don't know what affordable housing means because in the past, I don't know about this facility, I had friends who've gone into or looked at affordable housing that were not near affordable. Mm -hmm. oh, exactly. Right. Well, so mm -hmm. to be clear, mm -hmm. and help me with the numbers here, but affordable is, a, is an aggregate of the median income. So because our housing prices are high here, affordable means 20% lower, 40% lower. So that may not be affordable to someone. However, it does give somebody an extra boost to get in if you're on that cusp of home ownership. And with apartments, it may change, but what's happening is the closer that we, we are on all the highways. So we've become a lovely place to live for people who have to get somewhere, obviously. It's why we all picked it. So what we're finding is the further out you go, the more affordable things will be, which means that they're affordable, may be more affordable as well, which is a challenge. Just yeah. to be clear, we say 20% or 40%, 20% or 40% of the medium cost of the housing in that area, or you know, so like the income, it's in, it's income, income based. Income, income based. Income based. Income based. Income based. Income right. So it's your <coughs> income. So if you, if the, I don't know what Littleton's median. It's one hundred and fifteen thousand or something. So. so but it's. Yeah. 
Right, and it's it's the whole area. It's I think us we're stuck in Middlesex, so they use all of Middlesex County, which is higher because we're on the fringe of that. Yeah. Right, Worcester County starts in Harvard, <laughs> so we're a little bit on the fringe. So yes, I'm curious if that percentage is single house, you know, one bedrooms versus two bedrooms. What is what was the thought behind that? There were so many one bedrooms. Just seems like a lot of people would prefer, even if it's just one or two people, that two better Because Mr. Lapoli wants to have more, more units. More units. It's all just he money. can make more money. Right. And that's what happens, of course, is that we have somebody who's willing to build something in our town. And so can we get him to change? Maybe if enough of us say, hey, I would buy a two-bedroom condo, we are trying to get that conversation going. But I mean, it's not my business and I'm not making money from him, so I don't know the answers. But the more that we push back, he's been really responsive. Is there a waiting list? No. Yeah. Sort of We're so out. far out. Far out, okay. Far out. Um, Lupoli has indicated that he's willing to build um, purchase units so as well condos. as rental units. And I think one of my questions is, um, how would I distinguish which one would be better for me, given that I'm retired, fixed income, um, you know, all those, all those things. And do you have a house now? I do own a house now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, you'd have to look at the bigger picture to say, but in general, if you feel like your house is your biggest asset, um, you'd probably look at selling that and renting. Right. You know, as the you know, you could supplement your Social Security with money out of uh, out of the cash you get from the house sale, and um, you know, depending on how much that is and how much rent is, I have no idea what rent is in Littleton in terms of. Too much. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, like, go ahead. I have an accessibility question, um, and uh, how many stories is this? building and if it's more than one story will there be elevators because some of the challenges for seniors is that some towns have well if it's only two stories you don't need an elevator but if you're you know this is over, taller over 75 yeah. <laughs> two stories can be more than so that was one of the things in the last meeting that was really clear made to Rick who was representing Mr. Lupoli was that you know, if it's going to be a tall building, and we're talking six stories, I think at this point, mm -hmm. uh, there will be elevators, and we asked very clearly not for one <laughs> in a big building, but to have them strategically placed and covered parking and a lot of things. So again, keep keep feeding that to us, but also the select board is is taking that to him constantly. So. Planning board. The what? The planning, planning board. board. Sorry, planning board. Planning board. Wrong board. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murphy is king of the planning board. <laughs> Are you Mr. Murphy? So one of the things, one of the things that I get asked a lot, I own a home, I own two acres of land, can I break it up and sell a lot? Because then you can stay in your home and then you can do something. We have to work with the planning board and talk about frontage. We have to talk about sewer versus town sewer versus a septic system. So there's a lot of things that go into that and uh, it's a long process, but sometimes that can be working. Just an FYI, if you own a bog in your back nine, no <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> it's not actually sellable or buildable in today's situation. So that's not gonna help you very much. However, the reason that people like to buy a home with a lot of land around it, of course, is privacy and you get to do what you want in your backyard, right? So those are all things that we talk about and how we can help you maintain your house. If you have 30 years of deferred maintenance, the number that you then give Dave and say, this is what I'm gonna sell my house for, may not actually be the right number. So if you are able to keep taking care of your house and if that roof is 10 years over what was the expected lifetime and you've got eight grand and you can afford to put a roof on put a roof on and that will prevent so much pain and suffering of the window drip of the walls of the ceiling 
of more repairs later. So we talk about that stuff all the time. If your branches and your shrubbery and your trees are overgrown, have that taken care of and that will keep your siding cleaner, you don't get mold, it'll keep your roof cleaner, it'll keep your window sills from rotting. So we talk about that a lot. Like what can you do now to prep and not have more damage later, right? It's deferred maintenance can cost you a lot in the long term. So on the financial side, I'd like to just point out that everyone doesn't, if you own your home, you don't think you're paying rent, but you effectively are, right. because you're paying your property taxes every year, with, and you have your homeowner's insurance, so if you add those up, that's a fairly large chunk of a rent payment. Yeah. So, and if you move into a townhouse, you don't have, uh, you also add in your condo fees. So you're not necessarily <coughs> saving what you think you're saving by owning your house and not paying rent. Right. The rent is, will be more, most likely, than your current taxes and insurance, but it's, but it's not necessarily like orders of magnitude larger than you're already spending. But your right. rent can go up, and you have yes. no control over that. So and your taxes, taxes do. So right. taxes and your well, you have some control over that because you can vote one way or the other. <laughs> but, you, right? but you don't have much, but look at what your insurance rates are doing now. The well, insurance, right. Home insurance rates are going through the roof. Another thing to talk about is that when we work with first time buyers, for example, we often will say, if you aren't saving what would be equal to a condo fee every month, then you're not prepared when your windows need to be done or your hot water tank explodes or your taxes go up or you get a bigger insurance bill or you get a dog or you have a baby, all those things. So having that condo fee mentality we're used to not doing it, but what I find is as we're aging, we're paying more people to do more things for us. That's the condo fee, right? That's your landscaping, that's your trash removal. You know, I have a son at home who takes my trash to the dump. If he leaves, I am not. I used to, I just am not interested in it anymore, right? I will pay a service to come and pick the stuff up from my curb. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your structure of where that money is coming in and where that money is going out. And that's part of the equation that, you know, we're looking at for you to help figure out <coughs> which is worse. And also, if it's a little bit worse, is it worse long term or is it worse and it will be better long term? So if it's a few dollars more, sometimes it's better, sometimes it isn't. And to your point, Betsy, of what do I do to get ready? You are so good about maintenance. Your house is fantastic. So you're doing all of that stuff well. It's the, it's the challenge when somebody is not painting and then it becomes rotted, right? And then you get rolled in behind the walls and then something else happens. So, it is the care and keeping of your property that keeps your money be well invested. I, I literally, this is a very quick story, I had a client, she owned her home for three years. She had been in the real estate industry and someone had said to her when she was 21, whatever you put into your house you'll get back. So she had been tabulating every penny that she had put into her house and she thought that when we sold her house she was going to get $550,000 because that's what she had put in. She walked away with about 185, which was a lot because she just bought it three years ago. So the fact that I made her $185,000 in three years is astonishing and not at all what her mindset was. So that's why we're here, is to try to make these puzzles be less puzzling and less of a shocker. And don't forget the unexpected. You didn't expect your septic to overflow. Correct. That's right. You didn't expect your windows to leak mm -hmm. and so on. It's, um, yeah. So who feels like their decisions in the next five years? Like the pressing, yeah. So I think I think that My take a step. Me to lunch on Friday. Make <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Does any of them have a nice room for you? <laughs> <laughs> and I asked they asked the question. What is the agenda? <laughs> Are they going to have a long talk with you? Is that or is this going to be just to say hi? <laughs> I did not get an answer. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so. I think you're on to something there. Yeah. Your antenna yeah. is probably getting the right signal. I mean, that is for, from my side. I'm I'm usually dealing with elderly clients who come in and you know they're like oh, our kids are worried about us, and then like. I think the answer is always, I want to stay in my house as long as I can. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so that's good, but I think anybody who's kind of in that five-year window or less, you probably should make the list. Start making the list and crossing things off, like buy a shredder or go to a shredding event, um, you know, something like that with everything that's more than, you know, five years old. Um, you know, get rid of it. Go paperless going forward Don't if you can. You know, yeah. Yeah, no one's going to check those. Yeah. So, but the paperless isn't, it's not really related to the property, but then since you're here, you yeah, those things. I mean, I worry about that a little bit. I, everything's paperless. What used to be if somebody died, hmm. the statements come to the mail, at least so you know what's going on. But now. Just leave that sticky note with your password. Yeah. Where the kids can see it. <laughs> You know what I just discovered actually there are several versions of this, but I just died. You get to know everything now. Oh yeah. There are books right, all right. over the place okay. with exactly yeah. that. And so you can speak to what your accounts are and and don't make it so that your kids are not on your account or that your yeah, you don't have a password. trust or you don't like there are steps to take so that this is less of a mystery. And I'm not an attorney. I'm sure you have all worked with an attorney. It's important to get that part figured out yeah. and see if you can avoid probate. I don't know how to do that. It changes per person. So some trusts do, some trusts don't. I have been caught in that. So that's not my area of expertise. However, those are the things that will mean that your family can actually act right away and not wait six months or longer while that's all happening in the courts. So that's one more thing to, to do is, yeah. Yeah, probate is only involves what you own individually at your death. If you have any account that you put your one of your kids on, then they can write checks the same way as you did before. So, um, yeah. My name is spelled K-Y-M. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, there's a lot to it. Um, I think, uh, go ahead. Yeah, there's um, frequently algorithms that are in the paper about the advantages of either buying or renting. And it seems to shift from, you know, depending on the year, how the economy is going. Yeah. Depends yeah. on where you live. Right. Depends on where, uh, where you are in your lifespan. Right. And a lot of that is very important for you to work <coughs> through, right? Yeah. Um, another thing to really think about is if something were to happen, how long could you be serviced somewhere, right? Either a hospital or some facility and maintain that house? Or would you call somebody and say, we have to sell in three months? And so that's a conversation I have with lots of people, is I have a 91-year-old who's been talking to me for 11 years. When she turned 80, she called me. She owns one of the five, uh, seven, seven-level townhouses in Cambridge. And she's about this big, and she scampers up and down those stairs like a skipper. And she's lovely. However, it occurred to her her children, who are in their sixties, right, <laughs> that one day scampering is going to be a problem, and then she will never come home. So they started that conversation of, what would you take with you? What would you donate now? And she had four rooms filled with bookcases. So finding a place to take those was a very big step and that was a way for her to realize she could donate her her collections and it would be reveled somewhere. Not all of your collections will be <laughs> I'm so stamps. sorry. Stamps. No, I see a lot of stamps are not to worth it. Your treasures. Mr. Coins are Mr. worth what they're right. worth anyway. Yeah. Are not necessarily someone else's yeah. treasures. So. Yeah. My dad had all these first day of issue things in books, 
and the guy said, peel them off and use them on your envelopes. Yeah. <laughs> so. There are some recent changes to state law, uh, like uh, 3A housing, uh, regarding the None. changes uh, about uh, commuter housing close to railways. Hmm. Towns have an obligation yeah. to support that in some way. Uh, there's also ADUs uh, that are state the law change. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm mostly, although those are more or less cast in stone, we're still being debated by town by town. But what what's more interesting to me um, is maybe uh, there should be some state laws about aging in place and how can that benefit a homeowner who needs to modify. So are there any hmm. uh, you know, subsidy programs that will pay for a stairway? or uh, mm -hmm. remodel of the bathroom. Um, is there anything like that right now? So I would check in with the Council on Aging because sure. those keep changing. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Littleton's got its own municipal water and electric. So we can't participate in the overseeing this national grid. Mm -hmm. Furnace, no interest oh. for 10 years. 65 to get free windows uh, to lean on your house for 10 years. Well, we can't participate because the Littleton's on their own municipal system. Because mm -hmm. we say it's a third of the price. So the Affordable Housing yeah. Trust applied for a grant for the state, um, and if you meet the in, and if we get the grant and you meet the income requirement, there will be assistance for homeowners um, to do retrofits to their house um, um, or window, you know, roofs or things like so that you can't age in place. We haven't heard on the grant yet. Um, when we do, there'll be more information coming, but um, we're trying. We're trying, but again, it's it's income qualified and things like that too. So, one thing we also talk about a lot is could you have a separate space in your home for someone to come and live with you? So, if you want to stay, could you then get a caretaker to be in your house? And so, the ADU unit is is one option for that, so that you can build something on. But also, you can reconstruct most colonials very cleverly. Not rocket science. I think they do it again. Uh, 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 accessory dwelling unit. I couldn't handmade. remember accessory. Accessory? Accessory. So okay. your daughter yes. could build you a nice little something, something, a little she shed, a little something <laughs> in the back. Right. Grady pot. And the mm -hmm. issue is, in our town, that's going to be tricky because we don't have town sewer. So that means all of the laws and the rules and the space and the room number and all of that count for the septic system is applying. So we'll have to work on that, Mr. Planning Board member. That's a board of health. For the love of peace, they all give it to another person. Yeah. Right? Let me just get a dollar right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also do an ADU within the, the structure of your own home. Correct. Have to add right. on, and there may be people do a walkout basement. Right. Yeah. You yeah. could do uh, the attic. A lot of people yeah. have walk-up attics that have been, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. useful. That's great for a caretaker. Mm -hmm. And now we have, you know, you could use a baby monitor. <laughs> you can use your phones. You can use your watches to hear what's happening a floor or two floors below you, sure. which before that never happened. Colonials have been sliced in half, and you know maybe the kitchen is the shared thing. So we can be pretty clever. What are the town's restrictions? One, t I know ADUs are the law just changed, so they they have to be available for everyone. But the town I guess can still well yeah the town can still say you can have someone but only well, a relative. I don't know if that's what changed. Is, the what town changed it a while ago. Yeah, so you don't need a relative. Okay. Yeah, it used to be caretaker or care provider, right? And you know, one or the other. Now it's you anyway. could be caring for them, or they could be caring yeah. for you. And now it's anyway. Yeah. But again, you can't build it unless your septic system is big enough to handle that, <coughs> because that is a mess. <laughs> yeah. I just want to comment on the comment about the, the town utilities. If you have gas, however, you do qualify for a lot of those things. If you can right. get your national national grid. Good, re good reminder. Yeah. yeah. You have gas? No. Oh, I didn't. I don't either. Oil. I know. 
Good. Yes. And it's amazing. No they, they, they have, it's, Good. It is an amazing yeah. program. Good. Your yeah. gas. Your yeah. gas. Yeah. Natural gas. Yeah. Natural gas. Yeah. A lot of the programs, though, they set the bar so low for, you know, I know there are some state programs that you can have your house, you know, get rid of the thresholds and things, mm -hmm. but the um, requirement for the income is so low. Right. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. Social Security is probably higher than some of those requirements. So you have a real hard. career. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, since I brought it up, Little Bit Electric does offer programs. This is kind of funny. Because I moved in eight years ago and we, we gutted our house. And I only just found out last year, Little Tin Electric does offer if you get an energy efficient refrigerator, mm -hmm. dishwasher, mm -hmm. yeah. you have to tell them you only have a year. I, I don't know why I wasn't notified when I moved in eight years ago as a new customer. I didn't get something from Little Tin Electric saying, once you replace your old appliances, you can get a credit towards your bill, mm -hmm. up to like a 500 a year, depending. But nobody, a lot of people don't know about that. Yeah. Um, I, I wish Littleton had published that. Yeah. I'll be but taking that with me. Littleton Electric? Yeah, yeah. you have to go there. What's the guy's name? There's one guy there that he talked to him. I don't even think his name, Charlie or something. He handles it in the electric department. They transfer you to him. It's, it's on their webpage, but you have to go look for it. Yeah. So many things, right? So many things that we go and look for. Mm -hmm. What else bothers you about the house that you live in that you would change if you ch if you got into a new space? My laundry room is downstairs. I'm in a split entry. And trying to find room upstairs to change it is difficult because it's a small house. We got to give away the stuff in that closet. Yeah, no, closet. I no, know the one. Nice. I know the one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. My kids already did that. <laughs> <laughs> just to just to bring up a point, those of us that live in small capes and ranches, when we want to become more energy efficient and get new appliances, the new ones are bigger than our houses. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to do your kitchen to get the new appliances. I want, I want new, very energy efficient. Oh yeah, my kitchen cabinets, I, I will have to take my cabinets out to get the newer appliances in because they're so big, they're made for the monster house. You can get one, but it won't be cheaper. It'll cost you triple to It'll get the refrigerator. So either you remodel your kitchen or you spend a lot on the That's what I'm saying. slim it's profile. That's not as easy as it sounds because right. appliances are much bigger. When I, during COVID, I, my fridge died. So I went down to Hunter and said, so I just want the cheapest $800 refrigerator. And he goes, how many years has it been? I don't know, 30? It's like, you yeah, know, there's no $800 refrigerators anymore. I was aghast. When I moved in with my daughter, she remodeled a portion of the house to fit for me. So I said, I think I went to Lowe's in Nashua, and I said, I want the smallest fridge that you have, and it fits in that space. So you can is, get them. Yeah, you can get them. I think they're probably like six hundred, maybe. Oh, not that's too good. Mine was eighteen hundred for the smallest yeah. fridge that fitted by. By the way, realtors can give you a code for Lowe's for GE appliances for for that. I think I can do that without soliciting something. <laughs> GE slash Hayer. Hayer is the brand. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was good. It's yeah. still good. Yeah. Jan and I were talking this morning how part of the thing of just being older is in our head what things cost and what they really cost are just not even close anymore. Mm -hmm. And we think that's ridiculous, but it just is what it is. And that's mm -hmm. the other part is just getting over some of that. And oh. Internalizing it. No, my neighbor well, just had his roof done, and you said eight, spend eight thousand to get the roof done. His was sixteen thousand. <laughs> That's a bigger roof, house. right? But yeah. still, agreed. Like agreed. Yeah. And I have these conversations often, and and they change for me. I've only been doing real estate for thirteen years, and interior design for many years before then. So since I started, I used to be able to say, oh yeah. You know, you can get your your room painted for two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars. Now it's not that. <laughs> First of all, the gallon of paint is now seventy five dollars, which is gobsmacking to me. But it won't kill you. That's the very good news. It's not lead, and it's going to not poison your lungs for three months. So, you know, we're making progress with other things. 
So, but that is a giant thing. Everything does cost more. And we, again, this conversation happens a lot with can we save this and not do that? Can we do this and not do that in the house? Don't do your kitchen before you move. Nobody wants your kitchen on your way out. Because you're going to cheap it. You're going to do everything that you can do at the cheapest possible way to make it look pretty on the way out. That is not what your buyers want. Let it be vintage. We will call it a time capsule. And we will show you that people have loved and tended to this and taken care of it all this time. That's what they'll pay more money for. So be very careful not to just do something because it's old. If no it's in bad repair, it's what? No splash cards? <laughs> so many lists. <laughs> you know, it's the little things. It's can they see themselves living there? And so we'll price it right. But anyway, yeah. What's the climate like for um, buying land? Not that it's certainly not a little too, but in the area in the U.S. and building oh, something. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's How something. much money do you have? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I sell my house. That's my answer too. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. So yes. it's just you know, getting land. Right. Building some, it's, I don't know, are there people out who are willing to build one story? Sure. 1,500 okay. square foot. Yes, it will cost you double what you think it will. Oh. And the reason is because it's more expensive to go across than it is to go up. Yeah. One box going up. Yeah. Mr. Harvey is also an architect, and he can share with you some of those insights as well. But it, it's, you know, that's a lot of foundation. That's a lot of other things. And of course, that's the better way to do it for most of us. But you may consider, if you do that, to do an embankment ranch, which then allows you to have space below that someone could then. That's what I live in now. There you go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, somebody can then make that be more valuable in the next life so that you have, you sell potential as well. Yeah. I moved to Littleton with my husband in 1961. Mm -hmm. A small, small house on an acre of land. My acre of land costs more now in taxes than my home. Right. And we only had to pay $16,200 for the house at 5% interest. We, we, our mortgage cost $99 a month. And when the bank wanted to us to pay off the 30-year mortgage early, my husband said, they've got to be kidding. Look at the deal I've got. They're going to get $99 a month until it's done. <laughs> Good for you. That's your bank account. Yeah. Unfortunately, my house costs significantly more than that. Yeah. But that's okay, right? It's okay. We all we are where we are, and it costs what it costs. We all have to find a place to live. So that's what we're trying to do: is to make it so that you can get as much as you can on your way out, and then be as clever as possible on the way in to the next place. One of the things you mentioned that I really don't agree with is. Um, regarding part of a take care of your property, you know, your trees and bushes and stuff, you know, you got to pay attention to your roof and surrounding. Um, we moved to Littleton because of the trees. I and didn't say cut them all down. They didn't. Oh, no. No, they didn't. No, I love trees. But my son wanted us to cut all the trees down because they are very big, very big. Maybe up front, maybe a half a dozen. And I'm not ready to do that. Let the new owner do it if they want. don't want that. I yeah, like the ambiance. I like the beauty. I like the pain in the ass it is. <laughs> to, you know, take care of it during fall with the leaves and stuff. But no, um, there are things that should be done in the house. But from a design point of view or an opinion point of view, when I am ready to sell the house, let the new owner do that part. Correct. Yeah. You just want to clean. Yeah. I just, I want to tell you that cleanliness is next to godliness, whatever your God is, however you think. If your house is clean and impeccably kept, that's, it speaks volumes. What are you thinking? Absolutely. Did you 
then you have to talk to the planning board to make sure that you can put it on your property and it's not too close. <laughs> or is that the building department? <laughs> or the board of health? <laughs> Wait! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. So, but I mean, it's a value. Especially because people come here from all over the world and they don't know yet that they won't actually park in their garage. <laughs> That's where your lawnmower and your kids' bikes go and when your teenage daughter goes to college and leaves all the stuff. No, 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 no. You are so good. You drive in in the wintertime and you're still inside. Yeah. No way. I have a really nice car sitting right out front. I actually painted my garage doors the same color as my car so it doesn't bother me as much. I kid you not. <laughs> so this is kind of a silly point, maybe it's not. So, like carpets, like our carpets are old, they need to be replaced. It's a real bother, there's a lot of furniture there, and I think, eh, just wait until we're reselling. And I'm like, if I do it now, I get to enjoy it in the meantime. So, would you re-carpet, or would you do hardwood? No, I don't know, that's okay. I mean, well, that's another issue, because old school, I like carpet. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't see all the dust, it's soft on your feet, it's warmer in the winter, all those things, but the young people want, so that's another thing. Like, you bought it because somebody else wants something different anyway, right? They all want hardwood. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> but not in every room. So we can, we can talk through that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, so I have to make this clear. I am on the Affordable Housing Trust. I cannot work for any of you. So um, I either have to resign my spot over there, and Mark's here, so I can't do it just this moment, but, um, or I can help you. I, I can, however, offer to give you an hour of consultation to just help you and guide you and do so answer some of these questions more personally so that you don't feel like you have to shout it out in front of all your not quite friends or some friends. So, yeah. I live in Westford, so what is Westford with the housing there? Do you Robust. Robust. Do you go there? I mean, sure. can we, we see you? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to get a few agents to come to your house because we're not the same. We don't service you the same way. Everything is different. There are people who will help you in many different kinds of ways. And if you know somebody and you like them as a person, they may be a great agent for you. They may not be. It's okay to interview more than one. Not 75, it'll be confusing. What's the percentage for agents in Massachusetts? Is it a? There are 400 million of us. Uh -huh. oh. Going property, when you sell your property, you say It will sell. Okay. Oh, like I can't, dis I actually can't discuss that. I was wondering if it was a state rule. It is, no, everything is negotiable. Because and every brokerage on, has a theory yeah. about what that should look the like. on our property says 10%. Right, which is what I, and then uh, what does that mean when you get a, a buyer that wants 3%? Is that additionally to the 10% or? That's a very good question. I would read that contract very carefully. Oh, I didn't sign it with her. That's over there at the Littleton Motor Court. She's the queen of oh, all yes. the homes. Mm -hmm. and no one also, else should use anybody else. And mm -hmm. She's horrible. Mm -hmm. 10%, 10% is a lot. All you had to do was that face that I knew Sorry. that was not a right amount. <laughs> Most people but also, <laughs> here's the thing about that particular thing, <laughs> is that it's not real estate. And so she, because right, of that, she's not playing by the same rules, and it's, a, it's such a different but price point and such a different thing. So I'm not going to speak ill, but it is a different product and a different mindset. Yeah. Here's the best That's part. A, we bought the house from eight years ago. I had her in a couple months ago because I didn't know what I was going to do in my situation. You know what she said to me when she walked in? I had all my paperwork from the eight years ago sale. I keep stuff. I like paper. I had said to her, We have to talk about that. Point, point out where my deed is, you know, because everybody tells me you got a bill of sale and we don't have property tax over there. That's our secret. Um, so how do you know? Well, we, we rent the land so we have a lease from the owner of the land. Mm -hmm. You know what she said to me when she walked in? Now? I, she said, oh, well, um, that, that's the one you need, but it doesn't matter. I have a copy of that on my computer. That means that my name's not even on that. She could just print that off and say she owns my little mobile home. She won't. Yeah. She's, she is She's a an licensed. Not, okay. Right. That, that's, thank you for that comment. Because yeah. when she said it to me, I was like, what? 
Because no. they are different than our houses. It's not real estate. Okay. And that's right. why she can say 10% right. to me. Without it's like selling a car. Right, that's what I've been told. I mean, literally, yeah. Some of the cars cost as much. Except a car, you have a title. Right. We don't have a title. Correct. In Right. Isn't it fun? Right. It's like nothing. Okay. Right. So we can talk about that, is that we have this opportunity in Littleton, right, with a mobile home park. So that's another way to own something and then rent your space. So there are, there are ways to do different. There's a lot of, there are a lot of options. And that's kind of why we're here, is to help you figure out what's the best one for you. Because we don't know. And that's why... We both come from this with lots of anecdotes, lots of stories, lots of people, and we just know that most people get to us befuddled and confused and really nervous. So we don't want that. We just, let's have an hour and figure out a plan. What say you? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think uh, the sooner you're thinking about this, the sooner the less can you know, just take a step. And sometimes that's freeing, you know, once you get the snowball headed down the hill, you know, it can go pretty fast. And when you say make a list, exactly what are you speaking Well, about? in other words, um, what, what, sometimes it's a fear, I am worried about this, I'm worried about that, and then, you know, get answers to those things so that you free yourself up to yeah. You know. Microphone. Yeah, she can't hear you. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I think you know, just start for whatever your situation is. Like, I have a basement full of stuff. I have a garage full of stuff. I have a lot of paper. Um, you know, if you're going to stay in your house, you know, make a take pictures of the things that you think need to be changed. Like Doorways. Pictures. What's that? You might have repairs that need to be Yeah, you might have repairs. So just start start a list with things that, you know, maybe your worries, maybe things you know you have to do. But a lot of times if you own a house, as we were saying, with carpeting or anything, have a realtor walk through. Your idea of what needs to be done may have nothing to do with the resale of it. You know, I was like, Oh, I have a roof twenty years. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you need any. I'm going to give you else. more. So, yeah. 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 We don't um, want to give you a big list. Yeah. No, I'd say there's what's bothering you, know, what are you concerned with is probably the most important thing. I mean, I'm sure there's lists online, but um, I think the big thing is just if you check off that first thing sometimes, that's like, oh. I'm getting ready to move, or I'm getting ready to fix my house up. Even or, if it's you know. 10 years, even if it's 15 years, we work with people for decades ahead of time. Hmm. Having the plan just means you have a plan, right? You know you're going to go to Ireland someday, so you start to get the book. It doesn't mean you're going next week or you're booking your flight. It just means this is something that you have on your agenda, and you're excited about it. Then it means that when you go to get it, you know that this is the right season. This is the right outfit band. This is the right walking shoes because what's his name on PBS is going to tell you all the things, yeah. right? You know which pub you're going to have lunch on day two. Yeah. If you have a plan, it feels less daunting. And, it's, and, and also, we work with lots of people together. We're going to talk to your estate planner, for example, or your real estate attorney. We have teams of people and that we all play a role in it, which can be a little confusing when you don't know that. So getting that known and understood and build those relationships ahead of time takes out that, ah, I, don't, I don't think I can do this. And most of us, to the point, is we're going to help you decide who the right person is. You know, we know more than one attorney. We know more than one advisor. We know more than one estate plan or the people who come in and help you process things. By the way, they're get, becoming elusive. It's harder and harder to get them. Anyway, that's the point is planning ahead makes all of this 
let you sleep better at night. And for you who are going to meet your kids, you know, if you pull out your list, they go, oh, you have a list. Very impressive, you know. You're going to be surprised. Yeah. I think you can hold your own. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> yeah. I did have my roof replaced about um, three years ago. And I'm thinking about my windows because they're very, very, very old. Oh. Should I say old? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if I should wait because I don't, I, I know I'm not leaving now. Am I leaving tomorrow? Probably not. In five years? Probably. Yeah. Would they make your house be more comfortable? Yes. And would they... With the heat. Yes. And would it also prevent you from having mushy sills and other issues? Yes. Then that's the, that's the time, if you can afford it, to do those. Even if you don't do the entire house at once, maybe you get to save one of the walls because it doesn't have... It's all fine. But it would make your life better, to your point, right? It, w sometimes we fix houses to get them to the next person. Enjoy it. If you can afford to make your house nicer than it is now, and it doesn't have to be fluffy. It, having nice windows is going to save your heat. It's going to make it be nicer. It's going to be a quieter. It's going to all those things that new windows, you'll be shocked. By the way, don't necessarily make sure that you compare replacement windows and new construction windows. Replacement windows fit inside the hole. They just take out the window and plunk in the new one. It's going to have a lot of insulation all the way around, so the light that you were used to having is going to shrink by about 20%. Mm. If you do new construction windows, it's going to be more expensive because they're going to take back the trim and they're going to take off the siding and all the things and then they'll put it in. One of those is the right answer for you, but you should know what those two things mean. Wait, will they be impressed when I get estimates? Right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> right? Yes. I, I've experienced that and I wish I had known ahead of time. Mm -hmm. yep. What about refinishing floors? When are you supposed to do that? Or not at all? How bad are they? Mm, not too bad. A couple spots here and there. I have a solution for that. Ooh, carpet. Rug. Piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so because of the whole trajectory of this, it, if truly, if you need anybody to do anything, I probably have at least three guys on a list somewhere. So feel free to reach out. I'm I don't get any money from any of them, right? It just is, these are people that I've trusted and other agents in my office have trusted over time. So Phil Pham Flooring, he's fantastic. Pham, P-H-A-M. Okay. He's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Great. And there's a lot of them around, but yeah. Yeah. Can we, we talk a little bit about the IBM site as a long-term growth um, we about the what now? thing in Littleton? There are also IBM? Um, other projects in the pipeline that are very indefinite. We At the last town meeting, we passed a zoning change which allows 150 units um, down just across the tracks from the train station. And there's a very vague proposal that's going to come in front of the planning board for some kind of senior housing on the lot just above the station parking lot, that, that 30 acres. Um, I know no details about what that's going to be, but it's, it's a big, reputable developer. And so we're trying. It's, it's, um, what kind of housing is he going to I, I we know nothing. No, we know nothing. No, we know nothing. Oh, okay. But we are trying. Just, I mean, he has said that he's going to be in front of the planning board at some point with a proposal. Okay. So that's all we know. But the stuff by the, by the station, that was going to be more, not high-rise apartments, but more housing. Yeah, that's, I things like that, right? That's small mostly houses. Mostly townhouses, and, and I, it, that's low-rise, yeah, that's low, rise, low right. density. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it I think, well, six units per acre that we I don't think so, it was, but that's yeah. why we're calling it that was yeah. more so, people wanted something that felt more like a house if that was yeah. more. Right. And that's just the zoning thing. So there's no proposal about that. But and so when I get involved, I ask them to please put a bedroom on the 
on the floor on the first, first floor, floor, right? So there's a lot of situations where there's a place in air. There's a pl there's many of these have been figured out. There's a Maynard Marble Farm is fantastic. So there's several of them that you can have a master suite, a primary suite on the first floor with all your living space, your laundry, all the things. You'll still likely have a basement and you'll still likely have guest rooms and a bathroom upstairs. So depending on what we get from them, that's one of our requests because that's, it's what we keep hearing over and over and over again is we want one level living. Yeah. And, 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 and the, this kind of meeting helps the planning board hearing these the developers things. You know, or, or right. in, try to influence them. Right. From a financial standpoint, is there one thing you hear you say, if I had to advise people do this or don't do that, or this, you know, things you hear from you? In terms of improvements? I don't know, just in terms of general planning ahead. And, and like, what, what do you, you mean you sunk all your money into? Or what? <laughs> no crypto. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what it is, really. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure anybody does. Right. Um, yeah. But, um, well, I think. Anytime you're going to spend a lot of money, you ought to really think, especially if you're going to move soon, like, am I going to, to the point of, am I going to get it back, like the $500,000 I put into my house that I got 185, whatever that is. But that's, that's been the one thing I see is uh, people fixing their house up, spending a lot of money, and then the person comes in and they oh, I used to live here, and they come in, and the brand new kitchen is not there anymore, right. and the bathroom is ripped out. The and, brand new kitchen oh my from God. 1984. You know, <laughs> they just, you know. Yeah. So I think it's really, uh, I mean, I, I remember somebody said, oh, I got a big list of things that I need to fix in my condo before mm -hmm. I move, and um, the realtor came in and said, change your faucet in the bathroom. <clears throat> And that was it. Mm. And she's like, well, what about all this stuff? She goes, people don't, don't care. Don't presume. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So. Of course, the market's very good right now. Yeah. And by the way, think about this. If we're going to suddenly have 1,500 new houses in wow. town, in five years, in 10 years, it's not going to stick to be a seller's market. Hmm. I, I'm just saying that from an observer point of view. We may not have that same carrot, yeah. right? When there are that many other options, both in Littleton and beyond, then you may not have that same opportunity. I don't know that. My crystal ball is cloudy. I say that all day long. But we are riding a high that you haven't seen in a long time. The high to sell, right? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. we, all, we should have all lived long enough and we've seen it do this. Too Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You just don't know. Right. This is definitely still a seller's market. As a buyer agent, I put a an offer in $50,000 over on a two bedroom time capsule in Hudson and we didn't get it. I had a 20% down buyer. He could close in three weeks. It was really fast. He was really well prepared, no inspection, and I didn't get it. So that's the competition right now. Great neighborhood, great lot, great, it was one mile from the downtown. So location matters and it was immaculately kept and unbelievably outdated you know what i'm saying right now people buy your house dig the hole in the ground lock it up stick a million dollar house well, that's what my son's talking yeah. about all the time don't spend tons of money mom when the day comes the house is going to be gone and they're going to rebuild they're going to buy i've never been in either of your houses but it could happen there are very deep pockets what, so here's what concerns me about that actually, is that there are some friends of mine, truly, who are builders in town, and they will go and introduce themselves and say, you know, we can do this for you. And they will give you a price that is not market value. It might seem like a really good idea, and maybe that's a good way to get out quickly. They'll just take, you just take your suitcase and go. 
it is not your best money to do that, go ahead and put it on the market. And we will help clean it out and do all those things, right? Realtors do that. So it's up to you as to what your best choice is. But their goal is to look at the math. We have to get rid of all that stuff. We're going to have 15 dumpsters. We're going to dig a new foundation. It's got to be higher because of the water table. It's got blah, blah, blah. It's a different market, but it may seem like it's so much higher than you thought because you spent $11,000. What did you say? $14,000 on your house? Twelve. Twelve thousand yeah. dollars So well, I'm a, I'm a if somebody $1, offers $1, you three hundred, <laughs> that may seem like I'm going to take it. But what if somebody else could get you four fifty? Yeah. Right. So oh, yeah. the, you should you should oh, in, then, investigate. Well, my, son, well, my son's, Yeah, he, he's aware of real estate costs. Yeah. Or not, but anyway, but that's yeah. Just so when when I said twelve, it was for the room. Oh, no. Uh, how much did you buy your house for? Oh, 16. 16. 16. Oh. Yeah. 16. Yeah. 16. Number one, I you sell your house. <laughs> you sell your, money, your house. You want to make sure you have enough money that if you can get to a new place, you can get the new place. And you or like you it. said, rent for the rest of your life. Right? Yeah. Right. If you don't do that, you screwed yourself up. That's right. Yeah. Right. So you have to use common sense here, I think. Common yeah. sense is the big word. Common sense is not so common. I'm fine. I don't know. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, you had, you had your house, you had kids, and now your need for you know, a smaller place, yeah. you know, and then. <laughs> Be careful. My mother, for her 70 something years, said to my grandfather, when you sell this, when you sell this, when you sell this, and my grandfather said, no, Susie, you're going to have this house. And he passed away. My grandmother lived there for nine years. She started to have a bit of dementia, so my mother gave up her job, she sold her house, she did all the things, she moved in. My grandmother <laughs> passed four months later. She was mad at my grandfather for two years, <laughs> who had been deceased by that point, mm -hmm. some time. My point is you don't know who's gonna end up in your house and you don't know how it's gonna plan out, right? So the more we can take off your what if list, the better it is. That's what we try to help with. And. There's a lot of us who can figure out how to make it so that you can get your laundry upstairs or you can, there's solutions for everything. It costs time and money. Right. So we just have to figure out which benefit is going to be the right one for you. It's never the same answer. Who do you call to get help for staying in place? I understand you calling a real estate agent when you're moving and have that conversation about what to do. So Surprisingly, I have that conversation with people once a week. Oh, staying in place? Mm -hmm. I have. I, I don't convince anybody to do anything, but often the right choice for them is to stay in place for the time being. Mm -hmm. And we might make a 10 year or 15 year plan. Um, also, you really have to look at your finances very carefully to think about if you needed care, if you needed this, if you, you know, all of those things have to come into the puzzle. Yeah. It's, all, it's so many things. We get it. But if you choose to stay in place and you need to get things done. Also, look around and see which friend you might live with. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, is there any room? <laughs> Betsy has a lot of room. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy has a lovely home. <laughs> Pretty backyard. <laughs> but I'm tough to live with. <laughs> what do you think, Eleanor? I'm not saying a word. <laughs> My husband and I learned an interesting lesson about changes. Uh, when his parents started aging, they'd been in their house, you know, raised their kids in them. But he and his sister and brother waited a bit to make the one floor type changes. So they were pushing towards 90. And what happened, which we didn't think about, was their long term memory right. was of the original home. Right. So they're the, befuddled. No, no. The downstairs lovely bathroom, bedroom, sunroom. At night when they go to the bathroom, they would go back upstairs because they remembered. The, and so what we did, and we had, it's not perfect, but we made our change to our house when we were in our early 60s. Perfect. Good thinking. But, you know, it's not perfect. But now I'm moving downstairs because I didn't expect some things to happen. All I'm saying is it's an interesting conversation. This is our age group. 
but younger folks need to think about that because we never thought. Right. right. Oh yeah. Well. No, that's were, really, really they important. They remember the old one, but they may not remember the new one, and they were close to the ninety mm -hmm. when they made the changes. So you know, what if that's any use? Well, and we we meet a lot of people who then. Also, when you're confused, it's hard to think about the contracts. It's hard to think about having people in your house. It's, and if you lose a partner, it's hard to have somebody in your house. You might feel like, you know what, I don't want them to know that I live here alone. So we talk a lot about that with people. And you know, we set up buddy systems. Teenagers, senior citizens, it's all the same. We'll keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Diapers to diapers. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Do you feel a little bit more at ease or does it feel more daunting? It feels like we have uh, people who can give us answers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's true. It's a possible answer. Yeah. I feel I'm on the right track because of you guys. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Ask me Saturday. Okay, that's right. <laughs> After the event. Or an expensive line. So I am perfectly willing to come to the COA and have these conversations regularly. I think, you know, I, I like having these conversations. Talk to Liz. Okay. So, you know, I, I think. This is what I do, this is where I live. I've been here since 93. I know that I don't compare to some of these young whippersnappers who have been here since 1961, which is five years before I was born. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 I would suggest if you do this sort of thing, is um, to have a discussion with people who live in the trailer park, mm -hmm. because you gave out information today that some Would be helpful. Oh yeah, I, we can't find. Uh, you it, can invite us over. It's not that you can't find honest people. You can find honest people. I have uh, a plumber, pretty recommended in Groton, a big name over in Groton, and he just did not do what I needed, and, and I didn't know what to do, and when I told my guy neighbor, he said, you call him right now and tell him he didn't do it. I called the morning, and they sent another guy out to do the job that I had already paid for yesterday. And he is, it's a big name plumbing in Groton, um, and I, I was shocked. And, Human so, beings. Human and beings. I don't want to say that there aren't reasonable people or trustworthy people out there. They're just really hard to find. Well, you don't know. When I go online and try to get an appliance fix, there's like a website, go online, they'll come to your house. Four or five times they scheduled me and even had a guy name. By the time I got to the end, like, you know, it was like $80 for the first come out. They were giving it away for free because they kept scheduling me and not having anyone out. Finally, one of my neighbors said, oh, yeah. One, you know, your Littleton, yeah, they want to come to your house. But then when they see your address, huh. they say, oh, we're not going to that house. Because it's not a Littleton house. Uh, it's a little crafty single nasty. wide that needs some work. That's how I'm probably trying to find people. And it's not just me. I mean, my neighbors mm -hmm. have said the same thing. If you've got a list I have a of, great plumber. Yeah. yeah and I'm in If you call the um, COA office mm -hmm. and the IT outreach workers, they have like that's right. Handyman, they will recommend. I mean, I know because I, I have, would love to have somebody come in. I have a lot of old stuff in my house, and I know a lot of it's not valuable, but some of it might be. But I am hesitant just to pick out somebody and call. Them. Correct. You know, because you don't know. You, can't you know trust what's funny is we. Nowadays. I've already right. been a victim once of fraud. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, yeah. So you don't want that to happen. But there's a we don't there. have. There's we a person in Sterling that we used when my parents' house. Sold my parents' house. His name is John Powers, and he runs an auction house. Mm -hmm. And he came to my parents' house and took everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm surprised if he didn't take the trash. I mean, right. It, yeah. it was such a relief. Because well, that's the only you know, because I have stuff, and I just don't want to see it. My and my kids say to me now, "What do you want us? What, what do you want us to do with stuff when we have to do something with it?" Well, this you know, he so. just this guy comes with a truck into your home, and he's an auctioneer, so he takes everything and then pays you. It's like you get something, right? And yeah. You don't get what you think you're going to get, no, ever. No. However, it's no longer in your home. And that energy, back to woo-woo, that energy of all that stuff stuck well, is I daunting to, I to my, try to deal with. I managed to, I, I have a 12-piece place, a sterling silver flatware. I kept it in silver, 
I mean, a chest, you know, with a right. tarnish proof and all that under my bed because it was yeah, too right. big to keep any place on the bed. Dave, so you, you have a solution for that. I got my grandson one time, he was there, pull it out for me because I can't you know, pull something out from under the bed anymore. And now I got it out, it's on the couch. <laughs> and there it sits, right? And I'm like, okay, I have one granddaughter, you know, my daughter-in-law, my daughter. Nobody wants it. You have to polish what it. What do I do? It's in a, <laughs> it's it's in a polish-free chest. I haven't polished it, ever. $25 a piece is what it's worth. <laughs> $25 a piece. Yeah. Well, that's a good deal. Yeah. 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 Yep. Every spoon, every knife. I got, oh, it's 12 pieces. Yeah. I said, with all yeah. kinds of servants and pieces. You know? just did that. We just had the auctioneer at my dad's house. Really? And that's, he's like, all right, yeah, silver. I, I, I have other things, you know, that were, and so it's like, but I don't know where to even start. Yeah. And I would like to make sure they're gone and not just thrown away. <laughs> Thank you. So. Well, that's why some of the people who do this auction have another auction. Yeah. Do that. Either estate sales, all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's several companies that do it. And as I said earlier, they, they come and they go because it's a lot of work. And yes. they don't make much, and mm -hmm. you don't make much. Right. And it's a lot of work. So, yeah. yeah. And also, as I said, I, I for anybody in Littleton, just call. I mean, I know, this is embarrassing, but it's the truth. A, a couple of weeks ago, I realized I was getting clumps of lint in my little, you know, thing with the dryer. And I thought, oh, Marge, I don't think you've ever paid anybody to come and clean the dryer lint. <laughs> and I'm the only owner of the house since 1965. <laughs> and then I got nervous. So I called. As soon as you know, then it's you just know it's going to be a fire that that's very a, night. That's exactly right. So I, I thought, okay, I got to get this clean because I'm not going to use my dryer until I do. I'm afraid. Now. And so I just called the office and they gave me a list of handymen and, and somebody you can trust. And we're going to take what advantage office of you. What office did you call? EOS. Council on Aging. Council on Aging. One thing that you all might consider doing is to hire an, a home inspector at your house. What they'll do is come in and look as if there was a buyer, right? They're, they're now working for you. Then it's not a surprise that something that you didn't even notice, it wasn't on your radar, but you can get that fixed ahead of time so that A, it doesn't cost you more money long term, but secondly, when you go to sell, you can, you can show that if you want to. Yep. Not if it's 15 years old, again, won't matter. But if it's three or five years from now, you can say, hey, five years ago, we kind of started planning this, and here's what we found, and here's what we did about it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that helps. Again, I don't work for the inspectors, but I have a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, it's funny, because one of my resources in town is the Littleton Moms Facebook page. <laughs> we need a senior page that people are comfortable saying. That's a good idea. Right, that yeah. s that someone can say, "Hey, yeah. I just used this plumber, and we loved him, yeah. and this is why." And then you feel better about having him in your house. Mm -hmm. or because her. Google, Google comments, no. I don't, you don't really believe. You have no idea yeah. whether it's real or not. One person right. that complains is usually yeah. just yeah. The gentleman that came and cleaned my dryer was one wonderful gentleman. Right, cost me. You know, under fifty dollars. Nice, his business. perfect. Wow. You know, and he, saved you from nineteen sixty-five. <laughs> right. Sleep now. I mean, it was your like, house for under fifty dollars. That's the only thing there. You know what? He was no spring chicken. I hope you gave him a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> he was wonderful. You know, and, and right. I felt certain comfortable having him there because I felt like he wasn't going to take advantage of me. And, and so, he, he was just so nice. So, would that help you? Do you want to make a page? Yeah. We can make a Facebook page, right? Can I do that? Can I make a Facebook page? Is it against my rules? I don't know anything anymore. Well, we can, we'll talk to our, our boss. I mean, Liz, Liz can make a Facebook page, oh, yeah. right? And that way you can you can all... Sue and I are rep rep uh, representing the Council on Aging here. Anyway. Sue knows all the things. Yeah, and we'll, yeah, she's on the Council on Aging, so am yeah. I. So we'll... We'll discuss it. Well, I mean, truly, this is about we'll being part of your, your village. You need to connect with each other. And, That's right. you know, if there's this many of us, we were just talking, there's how many over 50 were? There's, I don't know, oh. there's quite a large percentage of Littleton. 
Oh yeah, we're up there. The numbers are pretty high now. So I think it's important for us to make sure that we're communicating with each other ahead of time, again, before there's an emergency, before somebody falls, before somebody has a, a tumble or a this or a that or a loss. So let's take care of each other. This is the whole point of living in a small town. Most of us do that, but let's keep doing that with more people. Sure. Sure. Or maybe it's a different thing, right? There's WhatsApp. There's a million things. I don't use any of that either, but also a little bit has their own web down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, website. Maybe they could get a, a page off of that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how that works. Yeah, they could just create pages. Yeah. In the broadcast newsletter. Right. Right. And now the town news. That's right, the town newsletter. Oh, town's great. Where, where so next month, okay, I need all of your help. Next month, I'm in charge, Sue promised to help me, doing the Affordable Housing Trust newsletter. So, and we'll put something in, and our newsletter is just a page, right? It's not a big thing, and she's promised to help. But anyway, obviously, I don't have trouble communicating or chatting up, so I don't think I'll have trouble. But the point is, we're trying to get more people knowing that there is an affordable housing trust right. and that we do want to help people and we want to hear from all of you. Uh, that's a Littleton group? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is the well, motto? What, what's the point of that? What, your trust? What do you do? What's the, the affordable housing trust? Yeah. What, what, you know, to get the, housing that's affordable and then we have money to spend on helping that's people a town do board. that. It's, it's a, a town board. A, yeah. To trust. Okay. Yeah. You're now nominated. Right. <laughs> we need new members. Put your name and phone number in here and I'll send them a link to you. So anyway, anybody else got anything that they would like to ask Dave or I before we let I'll you go? stick around for cookies? a little while. Yeah. Do you all have cards? Yeah. 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 Oh, you're the elevator lady, right? I know. I'm the elevator I had to, I had to lady. Dig them out. I forgot. I'm the elevator lady. Find your village. We we sponsored sponsored. I didn't buy the elevator. I'll put them by I have the a cookies. plaque in the elevator. Yeah, I thought you bought it. I bought the plaque. <laughs> I'm the elevator lady. Sure. Yes. Buy the elevator. I'll buy the elevator. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.